Hey guys, it's Sarah Ayler with softflexcompany.com. We are going to be using uh, buttons today to make some jewelry. I'm super excited. This is what I promised you at the live sale, um, that I would show you a couple ways to use buttons in your jewelry. And um, this is kind of new to me. I am no button expert. However, just like you, I have been collecting these beautiful check glass buttons as we've had them at the live sale. Uh, they're just gorgeous. And um, we loaded a bunch of them up on the website today. I think there's 18 new styles um, on the website available today. And we're doing a really great deal where if you buy three, you get to choose a fourth one free. Um, so you can get two pairs and one of those buttons will be free. Um, and you can find that at softlexcompany.com. So I'm going to show you a few ways to use buttons today, but I'm learning myself. And so we're going to just kind of play around here and I'll show you what I've learned so far. And then if you guys have ideas too, throw them out there and we'll learn from each other. Thomas did a fantastic blog today uh, with a lot of different options for button jewelry. Some of them are from members in our VIB Facebook group. And some of them are designs that Kristen uh, or I have made over the years. So be sure to check that out today as well. And he'll drop a link when he gets a chance. And then we'll drop a link at the end of the show again. So once uh, you're all done with the show, or if you watch it on replay, you can um, grab that link and then follow up with more information. I'm wearing my, um, my cowboy charms that we did, I think this was our Tucson GBE giveaway. We gave away these little charms with my Sleeping Beauty turquoise. So I'm feeling very Arizona, Arizona-like today. You know, that's where I was born. So it's got a little special place in my heart. Um, I hope you guys are having a good day. I'm gonna flip down to my hands and we will take a look at what I have here in front of me. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Lydia. So good to see you. Oh, good. Christian says she loves check beads or check buttons. Oh, good. We've got a bunch for you and we've got some really good ones. So first, let me go through the buttons that we loaded onto the website today and then we will get to some fun jewelry ideas that I have been um, working on. This is one of the new buttons. So let's look at each one. And we go like smallest to biggest, maybe. <laughs> this is one of the smaller buttons. These are all uh, buttons made with vintage glass molds in the Czech Republic. This one is a black button, and then they put kind of a metallic sheen on the top. It gives it kind of a blue metallic look. Um, I called it an eye bead because it feels like it has kind of an uh, keeping an eye on you. Um, and these are supposed to, this symbol is supposed to be very protective. Um, and if you can look it up, their eye beads have been around for many, many, many years. Um, and they show up in lots of different beads in many different cultures. So it's kind of fun to see it in a button form. And um, that is one of the buttons you can find on the website. Here's another one of the littler buttons. It's black, it's got some really beautiful gold accent around the edge, and then it's a really pretty bouquet in the center. And again, these are all a buy three, get one free. And they're all on the website. For the first time, we don't have never done check glass buttons on the website. We normally just have them in the live sale but we got two orders kind of back to back. So we have a little more and then larger quantities too, which is exciting. So we have a little more than we might normally have. This one's neat because it's got a really interesting kind of like a um, lightning bolt going through the center. And then it's got some faceting and some texture on the other side. This is also a black button that has a coating on the top, giving it that fun sheen. Um, look at this one next. This is a really interesting button. It's a really deep, dark blue, and it's really hard to see. It's like a navy blue, and then it has some beautiful silver leaves uh, accented on the top of it. 
Um, and then it's kind of a pinwheel shape. So lots of really interesting details on that button. I really like that one a lot. It's neat. Here is a really cool one. It's black and gold with that beautiful texture running down the center, almost like a river uh, running through it. This is kind of your classic button. It's going to be really easy to use on a lot of different uh, bracelets or centerpiece in a necklace or earrings because it's just like that easy black and gold combo. This is really pretty. I think I bought one of these. I feel like I bought one of these. I'm going to show you my button collection too. A lot of the buttons I have are ones that we've already sold out of in live sales, so we don't have them. Um, but I'll show you the ones that I've chosen over the last few years. Yeah, all of these come from vintage button molds. So some may look a little more vintage than others. This is nice because it's like a really lovely gray color, like a gray crystal color. And then it has that um, gold accent on the top that's showing off all the details. Really, really pretty. It's got a metal button shank on the back. Um, and again, these are all on the website. So if you want to check them out, that's the place to go, softlexcompany.com. Um, they thought I was cuckoo when I asked them to load up all these buttons. <laughs> 18 new items in one day. So big thank you to the team at Softlex for uh, letting me do that today. Thomas and James and Kristen and Davian. <laughs> And then, of course, our warehouse crew as well. I appreciate you guys. Um, this one's really nice. It's blue, like a really gorgeous color of blue. Um, almost the same color as this topaz. And then it's got almost like an orange sort of red floral. And then it's detailed on the top with gold. They are just amazing. I know. Aren't they fantastic? They're really, really special. And so that's part of why I didn't want to sit on them for another six weeks until the next live sale because we did get such a nice quantity of them. I was like, maybe we should let those who don't do our live sales take a crack at them as well. They're really special. This one's beautiful. It's got a gold background and then it's got some um, color painting. So some green and red, a little bit of blue and um, just like a fun, interesting shape. Another really pretty, easy one to use because it's got such great colors. And here's some blue and yellow. And this is a fun pinwheel shape and it's a, it's a tree or a threesome. It's like three big raindrops going in a circle. And it's got some really nice gold overlay, too. Oh, I love this one. I definitely bought this one. It's so pretty. It's like a starburst, like a sun or a flower. I mean, whatever shape it is that you get out of it. It's really, really gorgeous. So pretty. It's nice. It's got some, um, a really beautiful bouquet in the center. And then I just love, like, look at all these details. This almost looks like, um, like honeycomb from a beehive. And then you've got your flowers and just so beautiful. I'm just smitten with them. And I actually did a little project on this one. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. We're going to talk about how you can use buttons in jewelry today. So these are all the options that are on the website, but we're going to um, go in and discuss some options for how to incorporate it into your jewelry. This is a really special one. This is one that we haven't seen anything like it before. Um, and it's just really interesting. It's kind of a cameo made in Czech glass. And then they detailed it with, um, it's not really, it's like almost like an antiqued silver or like a hematite color. And then they have some gold accenting on there as well to make it extra special. It's really a nice piece. 
very, very unique. So we have some of those. We looked at that one. This is an interesting one too. It's got kind of a rose in the center, um, but I also see a sun when I look at it straight on. So it's kind of an interesting shape for sure. Like these could be leaves, but they could also be sun rays, those beautiful gold pieces there, but it's definitely going to catch someone's eye. It's a really nice light green, a translucent kind of peridot colored light peridot green. And then the flower is a little bit of an orange red color. And then it's got that gorgeous gold detailing. This is beautiful. This one's really lovely. I love the um, swirls, the spirals on it. It's got some orange and yellow and green in the background. This would make just a really interesting, really fun uh, pendant. Yeah, isn't it funny how things can look so different on a video than they do in a picture? A still picture just doesn't always do justice. And that's part of why I'm doing the video today. I also did a Facebook or an Instagram reel and tried to show a little more of the detail that way. This one's gorgeous. Speaking of Southwest, this gives me a total Southwest vibe. It's domed and it's an oval shape. And then it's got kind of a sun uh, motif on it as well. And it's a beautiful gray in the background with that gold on top. Really pretty. Look at how nice that is, you guys, as a center. Could be a gray bolo, but could also be just a really lovely pendant. You know, you could hang it either way, depending on how you want to wrap it. Like it could be a really lovely pendant this direction or this direction. I like that one a lot too. And then um, oh, we had one more little guy, a little black floral. It's got some green and then a beautiful little pink. And it is a black glass button. And then the big guy, the biggest of them all, <laughs> this fantastic uh, dragonfly with yellow wings and a green body. And it's kind of a tanzanite colored, um, tanzanite colored uh, outside of the dragonfly. Really, really pretty. I'm gonna probably use this one today. I bought one of these. I think they're super special. So that is all of the buttons that went uh, online today. This one I'm gonna show you is not online, just a warning, but there's plenty of other options like it. So often when I use buttons, you guys have seen me use buttons and bracelets. So I'm gonna challenge myself to do some other things today um, that are not bracelet related, but I thought I would show you a couple of bracelets that I've made using buttons. Of course, we had this beautiful button in our butterfly garden design kit recently, and uh, I used it in the center and I turned my triangles upside down so they were flat and they would hold that button in place so that it doesn't flip flop around. And that's how that turned out. Really nice, nice little centerpiece, really special, gorgeous vintage glass um, or vintage style button. And that made that bracelet just feel really, really special. And then I also often use buttons as closures. So um, in this case here and this case here, I made my softlex loop just big enough to slip over that button and um, just crimp it. And then you've got your button closure. You can also do some little seed beads on that wire. If you don't like the color of the wire, you can always seed bead up that piece. Um, just make sure you leave enough room that that can slide over the clasp really easily. And of course that's a tear cast button. We have kind of a similar button to this, but with a dragonfly on it and a copper color. And that's in our button category today too, if you want one of those. And then same thing here, just crimping 
and attaching over the top. And that's a pretty typical way that I would use, um, use some buttons in my jewelry. Um, so let's look at a couple of new things that I've been working on. So one of the things we talked about in the live sale was I said, wow, I'd really like to make this, um, this button into an earring. And, um, but I don't, I didn't know how either. And somebody said, well, how would you do that? And I said, well, that's a good question. Let me attempt to do it <laughs> and get back to you. Um, so that's what I did. I worked on it. I'm have my little, let me get my wires adjusted here. There we go. So I attached two different things here so I could show you, show it in two different ways. So I'm going to show you how to uh, make one of these today uh, using some Softlex craft wire. And you can make it taller than the button if you want a little bit of that wire to pop out. Or you can make it just the height of the button like I did here. And in that case, you may attach like a jump ring or something of that um, style. So I've got my jump ring here. I could make it into a pendant and hang it um, really easily from a piece of soft flex and then bead, you know, like just like I would with any pendant or attach an ear wire and make it into an earring. Um, these aren't super heavy, but they are really beautiful. So I think they would make really, really fantastic earrings. And in this case, I just did a little jump ring to show the pendant. So you could just string it, string it on some soft flex, throw some beads in, and you've got a fantastic little pendant. So let me show you how to do this trick. And then I was also thinking about playing around with the dragonfly, and I have some um, Vintage chain. This isn't something that soft flex sells, but uh, Vintage, you know, is sold by lots and lots of bead stores out there. So if you wanted to get some of this, I'm sure you could locate some. But I was thinking about doing like a chain tassel and then um, maybe doing a little bit of a um, beaded rope up the back end with that. But we'll see, we'll see how that turns out. So that's what we're doing today, you guys. I hope um, I hope this is a fun show. If you haven't gotten your Purple Petals design kit left, uh, we still have some left. I think we're about 70, a little over 70% sold out now. So you've got some, um, some time, but not a lot of time. So here's my button collection. This is what I got at the last live sale. Just like you, I get orders too. I bought some of those really great uh, green, ocean green check glass beads. I bought a couple of these cute little ladybugs because I'm just a sucker for ladybugs. So I'm going to make some earrings with those. I bought a couple of the mermaid, Green Girl Studio mermaids because I think they're fantastic. Also probably going to make earrings. I bought a moon, which is a button. So I could use that. I think that'll make a great button closure on a bracelet or a really pretty necklace. Um, so I'm excited to do that. And I bought a connector, a butterfly connector. And then I bought some buttons. I bought a pair of these thinking they would make really fantastic earrings. I bought one of the dragonflies because I just thought it was so unusual and just such a pretty piece and I didn't want to pass it up. And then I bought one of these black buttons because those are just really versatile and easy to use in almost any jewelry design where you just need a last minute button clasp. And so I grabbed uh, one of those. So we'll probably use these today. I keep, there is gold Softlex craft wire. I, for some reason, grabbed the silver. I'm not sure what I was thinking because almost all of these buttons are gold. I'm going to use the silver today, but you can get it in gold if you want um, to match your button a little bit better. So know that that is an option. I'm just demoing in uh, silver today because that happens to be what I grabbed when I was in the, the shop yesterday. 
So let's put these ones away. That's the start of my collection. I have also collected all of these little buttons as time has gone on. In fact, I got one of those pretty domed uh, buttons because I thought those were so pretty. A really nice olive green. Um, oh, I loved these ones when we had these ones, the black and the gold starburst. Um, ooh, and I have one of those. Those are on the website. So lots of different options. We had those cute little apples. I'm saving those for a teacher gift at some point. So lots of buttons. I And I'm sure you guys are starting to stock up on these buttons too, right? So, oh, thank you. Um, thank you. She says, what a great idea for earrings. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. And Susie's commenting, oh, these are very pretty buttons. Lydia says, I just heard Kristen shout at the moon. <laughs> She's going to be jealous. Yeah, Kristen, did you get a moon? She had the opportunity to shop before she went on vacation. These buttons are gorgeous. And Cynthia is noting that she picked up several gorge, gorgeous buttons at our live sale. That's awesome. I'm glad you guys are enjoying them. I think we'll keep carrying them and getting in new ones um, as time goes on. But they are, they are really, really pretty. So I've got my 18 gauge uh, Softlex craft wire. I'm using the non-tarnished silver, but like I said, these are almost all gold. So if you're going to grab some craft wire, I would probably grab it in the gold color, um, to be to be honest. I'm going to pull out a little bit of this craft wire and, and then I will just place my little guy back on there. I'm going to take my nylon jaw pliers and just run clear the wire. That'll straighten it out and get all the bends and the kinks. It'll also kind of start that work hardening process, which is good. And I'm going to just snip off my end here so it's nice and flat. Okay, so to start out, I'm going to make a Spiral. So I'm just going to take the very tip of my round nose plier and I'm just going to turn to start my spiral. Just like that. And then I usually take my chain nose pliers and I kind of hold on to it in the beefy part of the chain nose plier and I just kind of gently hold it and pull. Now, if you, you're worried about nicking your wire because you're going to actually show this spiral, this is going behind mine, so I'm not too worried about it. But if you are worried about that, you're making a spiral that's going to show, you may want to put a little bit of tool magic on your pliers. And I'm going to spiral it so that it's at least as big as the bottom. So you can see I went all the way to the bottom with that piece so that it will um, keep it from toppling forward. It's kind of holding it up. Oh, I'm getting pretty close there. I'm going to do just a tiny tad bit more. Okay, and then I'm going to take my chain nose plier trying to do this while you guys are watching is always difficult um oh mary our wire is um is craft wire so it's all a copper based wire this one is sterling silver plated and then it has a coating over it that protects that silver and makes it non-tarnishing but it also makes it hypoallergenic so people who have allergies often do really well with Softlux craft wire in the gold color or the silver color, any of the colors except for bare copper, which does not have the coating and can be patinaed. So it comes in uh, not just 18 gauge, which is our thickest, all the way up to 28 gauge as our thinnest. And I did start working, you guys, on possibly bringing in 16 gauge. 
I started talking about it. So it is happening, possibly. I'm working out the logistical details. So there we go, we've got our spiral. Now I'm gonna cut um, off of my spool. I usually use the flat side of the cutter onto the piece just to keep it all cleaned up. Just a good habit to have it. I don't think it'll really even matter in this design, but one of my habits. And then um, I'm going to bring it down into here. Now, one thing that's different about this one, and maybe it won't work as well, is that this is one of the metal shanks. So it's a lot loose. It's going to be a lot looser than this one. It, it has a glass shank where that wire fit in really nicely. So I'm curious to see, and we'll learn today, if uh, if this causes it an issue, if it's too uh, ends up being too wobbly because of that uh, metal shake, I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, so now I've got it through my button shank, and I'm going to come in just above here with my round nose plier. Oops. Oh, and one thing I did too on this first one that I think is a really good practice is I work harden my spiral before I went into the button. And you can do that using a wire whacker, which is a nylon a slab. And then you put it down on top of it and you take the other nylon slab and smack it down several times. And that will work harden it so it stays in that shape a little bit better. So I do suggest... Um, I do suggest making that, that change as well. So I'm a little bit below the end. I'm curious to also see if that will be okay, if that will cause me any issues. I might wanna go up just a little bit. Why don't we try going just a little higher? And like I said, I'm just practicing and learning this with you guys. So that's the nice thing about nylon jaw pliers, you guys. If you do something and you don't like how it turns out, you can always kind of fix it. I'm not liking how it's pulling on that. It didn't do that on the other ones, but I think it's because I had... I was able to work hard in it, but of course I forgot to bring my, do a little work hardening with the nylon jaw pliers. Forgot to bring my tool down from my desk. I film in a different place than my desk, so sometimes that creates problems. Okay, I'm gonna go up just a little bit higher and bend it. I think that'll be, I think I'll like that better for attaching. And then what I did was I came in with my chain nose plier underneath these two and I just kind of bent it out and then held on to it so that I could wrap around it. And bring it in tight. Boy, this just does not want to work with me today. <laughs> That's the way it goes. There we go. And then I kind of straighten it out. Got a little kink there from when I messed with it. And we'll just go in and trim. And then we just kind of want to tighten in that little extra tip there so it doesn't grab onto anything. All right, no, I think it still work okay. Even though I was a little nervous about it, I think it's gonna be okay. Let me grab a, you can do a jump ring. You could do an ear wire. Let me grab an ear wire. In fact, we could just take this one off of here. You open your ear wire to the side and then just attach it. And there we go. That little spiral helps to make it hold up straight. 
you don't see a lot of the loop over the top, it might be good to have some gold, like I said, that actually matches. Um, but this is gonna hang really nicely from your ear. It's gonna be fairly straight, which is nice. So you can really see it. And then another thing you can do if you don't like this style is you can always dangle something from here and, um, and then attach up the back with some soft flex. So what I mean by that, let me get some, something we could dangle from it. A little weight at the bottom, a little weight on both sides, a little gravity can help. Just looking through some beads here to see if I have any beads that would would work or maybe a tassel a tassel could be cool let's see some beautiful tassel sets on our website it's a nice one so we're going to take a little soft flex to um to attach that got my blue topaz color I love these buttons too, Kathy. They're so, so pretty. Really lovely. Thank you, Debbie. Debbie says that's very pretty. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to grab a crimp tube this time. And we'll have to figure out how we're attaching at the top. Not sure on that. I wonder if... I wonder if I could even do like almost like a straight stick. Hmm. Working on a new idea. You know how it goes, right? So we're going to start. We're going to try it and maybe it'll work and maybe it won't. But we're not going to be upset either way. We're just going to go for it. See what happens. So I've got probably about six inches of this blue topaz. I'm going to get out my magical crimping pliers which have a little dip on each side that um, that is identical. You center your crimp tube and then compress to create your little four corner ravioli. And then you turn it on its side and you compress in those four corners and go around and around. So you get what looks like a little round bead, but also a really solid connection. Okay, will this work? I do not know. I've never done one like this before. Um, so what I was thinking about doing, wondering if I should put some beads on it just to give it a little more girth. A little bit more. Let's see if this little cube thing will work. Hate to hide a bead behind a button, but if it's a really pretty button like this, I might be okay with it. So maybe we can do something like that. If you've got some long cube beads, that'll help kind of stabilize the back a little bit. And then we're gonna crimp to our tassel down here. Let's see if it works, you guys. Do you think it's going to work? Give me a thumbs up if you think it's going to work. <laughs> but don't give me an angry face if you think it's not going to work. <laughs> Those angry faces always crack me up on Facebook. <laughs> There's very few things that I need an angry face for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm attaching or a thumbs down on YouTube, you YouTubers. <laughs> We're just playing today. Here we go. I'm going to attach that. Let's see what it looks like in the front. How's it looking? Does it look funny? No, it's kind of fun. Look at that. 
We're going to attach it to an ear wire. Let's see. Let's see if it works. It's button day here at Softlux. Buttons, buttons, and more buttons. <laughs> if you want to straighten out your wire inside of there, you certainly can. It's going to give you a straighter connection to that tassel. It's also a little tricky though to get all your wires in the right space, um, but you can do it. And then we're gonna come in and center that crimp tube again and compress to create our little ravioli guy and then uh, turn it on its side. Oh, good, Lydia. Lydia says, no angry faces, even when my my experiments don't come out. No angry faces. <laughs> I do love an experiment. I am like a um, jewelry designer scientist. I love, I love to try things out and see if they work or not. Um, I hope you guys enjoy that process too. You never know, never know when you never tried something before, if it'll look good or I'm gonna have to try these ones on to see how they hang. Hold please. Let's see, I'm gonna bring it up here so you guys can see. What do you think? It's tipping forward just ever so slightly. So I feel like that would annoy me. So it might need just a little something else. It's a pretty concept though with the um, tassel and the button. It's a really pretty concept, but it almost just needs like a little more weight probably down here, maybe a bead at the bottom to add a little weight to make it, you know, pull down on that bottom so that it pulls it up just a little bit. Maybe a dab of glue. Yeah, you could probably glue down your um, glue down your beads. That's another thing I wanted to um, suggest to you that we don't have the parts and pieces to do this, but you can get um, flat backed posts that you can glue onto these. You don't need to remove the shank or anything, you know, just take your um, take your glue, whatever glue you're using, maybe specialty glue, uh, but any kind of uh, jewelry super glue, maybe E6000, put a little dab of glue and then put one of those posts on there and let it cure. And then uh, you could wear it that way too, just as like a post earring, um, which could be really cool. But yeah, you could probably put a little dab of glue here if you wanted to uh, glue that down so that it gives it a little more. I wonder if a craft wire would work better with the little loop at the bottom. Something to think about as well. So yeah, some things to play around with and think about. I wanna see what you guys are making with these buttons too. So when you, I think these are cute little pendants, such cute little pendants. Isn't that lovely? Just like a little, perfect little pendant. When you make something, make sure you post it into the VIB group because I want to see what you're making with buttons. And I'm going to play a little bit more with this dragonfly, I think. I'm going to do a little chain. I have this beautiful vintage chain. We do not sell this on our website, but just put vintage in Google and I bet a million people will come up. And I bet some of my GBE uh, partners sell it. I did ask in the group, but I asked a little late. So I don't think I got any answers about who sells it. But if I do hear from one of them that they sell a vintage chain and jump rings, I will for sure post a comment so you guys know. So I was thinking this is always fun to have like a little chain fringe, could be really cool. So this sits this direction if, you've want, if you want something to hang from it. And that's what I want. So I'm gonna do some pieces. 
probably need to do one of these little jump rings here. I think the bigger jump rings are probably too thick, but I could probably attach the chain with the little jump ring and then attach that little jump ring with the big jump ring. <laughs> If you have two pairs of chain nose pliers or a uh, bent nose and a chain nose, that's much easier than using your fingers. I'm just um, making do with what I happen to have here in front of me. And I'm just going to take my little jump ring, grab a little bit of this chain, and I'm going to do a few different pieces. So I'm not sure how long I want them to be. I'm thinking I'll just do like that and we'll do a few different sizes and not worry too much about thinking of overthinking it, right? Hey, Becky. Yeah, you can watch on the replay anytime. All of our videos you can replay. Did any of you guys replay the customer appreciation week videos last weekend? If you missed them, um, miss them in real time. I was thinking some people might just sit and do that all weekend last weekend. I was so zapped last weekend, you guys. <laughs> My family was like, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> like a bus had run me over at customer appreciation week. I, just, I was so tired. I slept and slept last weekend and did get in. Uh, we had some family visit and I got in a, a nice swim at our local swimming pool, did some lap swimming. So that was nice. Oh, good. I, I see some of you did watch Customer Appreciation Week on the replay. Yeah, you can find those on YouTube. There is a um, Customer Appreciation Playlist. And so that's a really easy way to catch up on any of the ones that you missed. And they are not, um, they are not going away. They will be there. And a lot of those videos, you know, you don't have to, you didn't need to be there live to enjoy them. I'm going to go too low because this is a pretty long, long pendant. I'm going to do one more piece. I'll close her up. All right. Get my... So I was just attaching some chain. I need to carry chain. I love chain. It's so fun. Now I've got a bigger jump ring. I'm just going to attach that. And my button. Come in and just kind of close those together as best as I can. Might have to go back and forth a little bit to get it close really well. You don't want to don't want to break your button, but you also don't want to lose anything. So that's how that connection looks. I made a little one with all the chain and then that big one to attach. And there we go. Now we've got some chain that we can attach things to if we want to. We could just leave it as a little chain tassel, which might be kind of fun too. Um, and then we can decide what we're doing. We're doing up here. Sometimes I take chain and I just string it right through. I'm curious if this will fit through with this jump ring in here. Let's see. Always curious, will this work? Will this work? No, I think that would be a little hard. Hard to do. So we'll use some soft flex on that to fit through that little button shank there. 
this is just a little too big and then it's going to be kind of a tight kind of a tight fit even if I do get it through there but of course I still want to try because I'm because <laughs> that's just my personality <laughs> I wonder if I could do a jump ring let's see I wonder if another jump ring might fit in there let's see and then I could connect the chain that way yeah I could fit a second jump ring let's see how that lays so they are a little tight going to be careful with your glass button. It is glass. They're very, very strong, but you still want to handle it with, you know, some tenderness. Don't be rough with it. And if I were to attach this one to that. These are some heavy duty vintage jump rings. They are not light. I got an angry face. Who did the angry face? Thomas, go look who they are. <laughs> no, sometimes people do it on accident. It's kind of funny. And sometimes they do it on purpose. That's okay too. You gotta have a thick skin when you, um, So that's going to pull forward. So we need some really nice weight down here on the bottom is what that tells me. Really good weight. So probably not a tassel. Let me see how it is. Well, when it's on you, it's different too. Let me. So when it's on me, you know, I'm backing it up. So that does kind of help because it's a necklace. Makes it a little bit easier. So it naturally falls like that. But if I were to wear it, this is what it would be looking like. Somebody has a case of the Mondays. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Donna asks, is adding a chain fringe a good time to use the lock jump ring? I have never used a lock jump ring, so I'm not too sure on that, but it sounds like it could be. Um, let's see. Becky says that she loves chain tassels and earrings, too. Oh, I bet you watch Star um, from Star's Beads then. She does so much of that. Does such a nice job with it, too. So what I was thinking about doing is maybe like this much chain and then some soft flex attachment up here. And I'm going to use the tanzanite color because it matches this dragonfly just so well. And I'm going to think about which beads to use. We've got some beautiful yellows and greens and then some tanzanite so i pulled out i thought maybe these would be kind of nice i'm not sure about the colors together though and then i have tons of yellow beads from all the different yellow mixes that we had this year we had so many different things of yellow so i could grab some yellow out Maybe that would be kind of fun. Looks like this yellow wing is sort of this darker yellow. So let me see if I have more in that darker shade. That's going to work with it pretty well. So we have quite a bit of these things. And let's see. Hoping I had another one of those like really beautiful matte yellows. This one almost is a little bit of a match too. Could be very pretty. No more of those matte ones for some reason. 
must have used it on something. Right. So, and then I have bought the blue from our summer rain, which there are still some summer rain. Are there summer rain bead mixes? I think there are. Now that I'm saying it, I'm questioning myself. Maybe something like that up here could be pretty. Um, got these gorgeous gray beads left that are so pretty. That could be really lovely. Let's see if I have two of them. Yeah, I do. how that looks on the tanzanite wire. So I'm using the Softlex um, 019 medium diameter, all purpose, most commonly used diameter of our wire. Um, I'm gonna use the tanzanite color, which you can find just by itself, or you can find in the Tranquility Trio. If you want to grab a Tranquility Trio, it's got the dark blue, the tanzanite, and then that blue topaz that came in our Summer Rain Design Kit. And this is one of my favorite colors. It's so pretty. It's kind of a periwinkle color. It's really, really lovely. Donna's saying, what about the twist beads that I have left? I think you're referring to these ones, perhaps? I like these ones. They're a little bit more topazy in color than they are the tanzanite color in this dragonfly. So I'm not sure that the color would make total sense with this uh, dragonfly, but I do like that. I also really like this dark blue. So that may be something we could move into there. Maybe we can do something like this on the wire. A lot of my designs you'll find just use a few beads um, and then I've got tons of beads left over and you can make tons and tons of designs um, that way. And I'm gonna take a pretty long piece. Let me see how this hangs if it's lower down. It still hangs really nicely. So I'm going to make it kind of a long necklace. And you see, that's probably about two and a half feet of wire that I'm cutting off to make a long necklace. This is a 10 foot spool. So you could make about four long necklaces from one 10 foot spool. I'm going to use my gold Softlex crimp tubes. They seem to match the Vintage brass the best. Um, and I think the gold sometimes looks really pretty with the brass. Just kind of brightens it up a little bit. I'm gonna take a two by two millimeter Softlex crimp tube. These are very thick, very strong tubes. They're solid tubing. Uh, so a lot of crimps will start out as a flat sheet and they'll get rolled into a tube and they can be very wimpy. Um, so these, these tubes are just really strong and very, very um, durable. Hmm. I see some other comments there. So I'm going to read your comments in just a minute and we'll play around with the beads and decide what we think will work the best. All right, so I've crimped um, or at least connected and I want to take this out of, well, it's just in a ring, so that's easy. So I've connected, I strung my wire through my crimp tube into my chain and then back into my crimp tube. And now I'm going to grab my magical crimpers and crimp that wire. Our wire is super flexible, very, very, very strong, and will last a really long time. I'm just gonna trim 
And then we can play with what beads we think will work the best. Move this up here, move this out of the way. Let's see. Oh, good, Anita. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Let's see if I can get my chain back in here. I love just getting my beads out and testing things out and playing. And it's always, always a fun day when you get to bead, right? For me and for you. Lydia says, I think the green or the yellow beads match better than the blue beads. All right. I hear you. Yeah, the green beads might be nice to work in there too. Let's open that up. And we can play with some different combinations. And I don't think I'm trying to, to match perfectly. So we may end up, sometimes what looks great on the pendant with the green and the yellow, I might have a harder time, you know, with those exact colors in my beads. But we'll see what, what works well. I kind of like the dark blue and the yellow and the drop, but let's take the dark blue out and put the green in. Maybe the green would go, it's a little bit smaller, go on the opposite side. Let's try it two ways and then I'll let you guys decide which you prefer. Do you prefer not get this drop to stay put. Do you prefer the green and yellow, which more perfectly matches the pendant on the left? So you can say left or you could say green. Or do you like the dark blue? And whatever I end up using, the green or the dark blue, I will probably do some drops down here too. So that's kind of a warning. There might be like three drops down here as well. Which do you prefer? I see a left. Oh, that green and dark blue look nice together. <laughs> do I have to do another set with green and dark blue? <laughs> I kind of like those better than the yellow. Let's see. I just changed the right on you. Oh, everybody's liking green. Okay, do you like the green on the left or the right now? Do you like the green with the dark blue or the green and the yellow? I love having a hive mind here that can give me your thoughts. Kristen loves the green and the dark blue together. I'm kind of liking that combo too, Kristen. Green and blue. I do see a lot of green and yellow still though. Everybody feeling good about green and yellow or should we go for the green and the blue? I'm feeling the green and the blue myself. <laughs> it's so fun to have, um, it's so fun to have you guys here with me when I'm beating and to get your, your input. Still liking the left, okay. Mary says, why not both? One of each set on each side. Oh, well that's an interesting idea. I'm not sure I would, I'm not sure I would be brave enough to wear it that way, but I do like your thinking. That outside of the box thinking is really great. The yellow's too bright. Well, this yellow on here is really bright, so that's kind of why um, we ended up with that. What if we were to marry the two together and do blue, yellow, and green? What does that look like? Let me, let me string that one. And then we could do some blues and greens at the bottom if we wanted. Okay. 
And maybe it's the teardrop that's throwing it off. Hmm. Might be a better option. Hmm. Ooh, I'm liking that. I think that looks really good with the pendant. Whatever combo you use, add yellow to the bottom. Oh, okay. So use the yellow on the bottom. That's a nice, um, that's a nice suggestion. Whatever combo you use, this is a Christy on YouTube. Oh, Wendy asking, what size crimp should you use if you're running two pieces of soft flex on each side of the button? Two pieces, I would usually do, if I had two pieces of soft flex, so let me just do like a little dummy version. If I was connecting two pieces of soft flex, what I normally do is I take my crimp, I string, would string both wires. I would take one of my wires to connect to whatever it is I'm connecting to, button or pendant or a clasp. And you can kind of push that one down in there. And then I would crimp it. You can fit three wires through a two by two millimeter soft flex crimp tube. And so I normally take advantage of that when I've got a two strand piece to use that two by two. And then you just trim off that wire and then this little short end here. And you've got your two strands that are attaching to whatever it is, a button or a clasp or ear wire. Um, it's a great way to get your two strands. Then you do the same thing wherever you're attaching on the other end. Um, so if this is the front of the design, you can take that crimp tube over both wires and then pass this through whatever you're attaching to and go back in. And then that leaves you your two wires in the middle to work with. I hope that answered your question. Let me know if that works, Wendy. It is ravioli time. <laughs> Oh, and Donna's saying, I think the black gray is the way. Oh, okay. Good to know. Fern likes the yellow. No green on the bottom. Oh, you guys have such so many good ideas. I'm going to go with this on the top, and then we will work on the bottom and add some colors down there, too. I'm thinking this dark blue and green on the bottom. Like these, these greens and then the, a couple dark blues could be really pretty. I'm feeling like the yellow is one of those colors that if you get a little too much of it, it might be difficult. And so that's why I was thinking about sticking with the other colors. <laughs> do you, Sarah? Okay. Well, I always do me, but I love input. Like I may not have come up with this, um, this combination if I didn't hear from you guys what you like. It gives me a little bit of insight. Oh, good, Wendy. I hope that helped. If you have more than two strands, you can step up to a three by three millimeter crimp tube. And then in that case, you would, um, you would use the Mighty Crimping Pliers which are one of those crimping pliers that do kind of a folding mechanism. And uh, you can do three or four, lots of strands, eight strands if you want, in one of those three by three crimp tubes. They're pretty big. So I just took this extra wire and strung it into my crimp tube. And that is because I want enough nylon coating on my two wires that that crimp can really anchor down into um, into the wire. I'm going to settle my crimp tube inside of there and then I'm going to go ahead and compress. It's ravioli time, Fern. <laughs> Miss Fern on, on uh, YouTube. <laughs> Everyone celebrate. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna take those two, take it on its side and compress again, and then just go ahead and round it all out. Nice. And then I can come in with my cutters, get as close as you can into that crimp tube on both sides. And trim off that extra, extra wire there. And I can probably even get in a little closer if I try a little harder so that I don't see that wire. And there we go, that's the first part. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of this. Let me string it first. So I've got a crimp, a green bead, which came from some previous kit. I don't remember which one. A, a yellow bead, dark blue bead, which just came out of our summer rain kit um, or bead mix, I think. No, this was in the kit. This one is in the bead mix, the teardrop. And I dropped it. <laughs> That's the kind of day I'm having here. Okay, there we go. But I will not give up. And there we go. Oh, sometimes you find a bead that has just a really, like a little thing stuck inside of it. You can take a reamer to clean it out. In this case, the wire poked right through, which was helpful. But uh, having a bead reamer on hand for those situations can be nice too. I have strung this through this jump ring at least three times now. I need a chain bead stopper. I wonder if the bead stoppers would work on the chain. That in there. Oh, it's just gonna go this way. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my crimp tube and string through the end of my chain and attach into my crimp tube. Now this is where you wanna check size. I'm just gonna go for it on size, but if you wanted to make sure that it is gonna fit you, grab your bead stopper, put it on the ends of the wire here before you crimp and try it on. And that's a way that you can uh, test it out and make sure it's the perfect length for you. One thing I like to do whenever I'm making a necklace that has two similar parts like this, I like to kind of compare the two loops and make sure they're a similar size. And then straighten out those wires like we talked about before. So they're as straight as possible so I get a nice straight connection to my chain. And then I can go for ravioli time. I feel like I need to learn how to make raviolis in real life. That might have to be on my to-do list. Possibly for next summer though. Because <laughs> school is starting and life is gonna get super busy. Okay, so I've got my crimp going. And always test that crimp, make sure it's on there good. And then you can trim. And then you come back up and pull your beads down. And that's when you do this last crimp. This is the last one up here. So I'm gonna get another little extra piece of soft flex. I have, happen to have some left over here. So I'm just gonna use that. Slide it in my crimp tube. Just gently hold on to those crimps and then slide the crimp and then slide it down to the beads. And that way you'll get up next to the beads. And that wire will help you leave just enough space that these beads will be able to wiggle around a little bit after it's crimped, which is what you want. That little tiny bit of space gives a lot of flexibility to the design and makes it feel nice. Oh, 
I'm curious to see how this is. Is it going to be wearable? That's always the test. Sometimes when you try new ideas, like, oh, is this actually going to be wearable? Now on the bottom, you could use head pins if you want. I think I'm going to make some soft flex head pins to attach. Let's see how many of these I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm definitely going to do some greens and some blues. And I'm thinking I might do more greens than blues, possibly. You see how they kind of naturally lay out here. go this one goes right here okay so let's do maybe like a blue and a blue and then a green and a green and a green and a green something like that maybe I know you guys can't really see it let me move this up Oh, thank you. Christian says she loves the bracelets that I'm wearing. I got this one from Miss Candy Cooper. She does these beautiful sparkle bracelets. She has them in lots of different colors. And I have a couple of them. But this one is so easy to wear because it's like a pretty just clear crystal. Um, so it's very wearable. And then this one, these are some um, crystal quartz beads that I got from soft flex years ago and then some really beautiful little bali silver beads and then this clasp i've had for two decades um for like 20 years it's a sterling silver clasp that i got from just imports and she doesn't sell them anymore everybody asks me about it um and i've just had those for for like a million had that particular clasp for a million years Donna asks, does Softlix carry a wire for wire wrapping? We do. Yes, we, we have a um, Softlix craft wire. It's a copper-based wire. Some of them have a silver plating. Some of them don't. And um, then it has like a polyurethane coating over the top of it that makes it non-tarnishing and uh, also hypoallergenic. It comes in gauges 18 as the thickest all the way up to 28, which is the thinnest. Um, let's see, Christian says, oh, that's where I saw the cup chain one. Yes, yeah, she has them in a bunch. I just ordered one, another one from her that's like peacock colors. I was like, ooh, I've got to have that one. I really like that one. <laughs> oh, we still got to do the dangles, Cynthia says. Yep, I'm going to do those dangles next. Um, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to take some of my Softlix craft wire again. I will use the tanzanite color again. And I'm basically going to make some Softlix head pins. And so I'm going to do that by taking a two by two millimeter Softlix crimp tube. I'm going to take my wire and back into my crimp tube. And this is just like a dummy loop, totally unnecessary, but I need two wires running through the crimp to get a good stable crimp um, for it to like really connect into the wire. And so that's why I just back into it when I'm making a little head pin. Got my little square. Like I said, you could totally use head pins for this too if you wanted to. I'm just... I'm the soft flex girl. So, you know, the soft flex girl uses soft flex, right? And so I got my little round bead and then I can just come in and cut off that whole thing and then cut off this little doodad here and then make it as long as I want. 
I don't probably need it to be this long, but I'm going to make it long just in case. And then I can go in and string my bead and then just attach it to the chain with a little loop. And this is a situation where you do want to try to get your wires as straight as you can so that that connects really nicely. The bead is really light and the chain is really light and you don't want it to kind of pull sideways um, when it's connected. So try to straighten it out the best you can. And then you just do all those same steps with your crimping pliers to round it in and make your little connector. And there we go. There's our first one. And then I'll keep doing that with the other ones. I'm not going to make you guys watch me do that six times. Um, so I'll finish that up on my own. And I will post a picture to our Instagram page of that final, um, that final design using the dragonfly button. I will also post a picture of this really fun earring that we worked on and this one too. And I'll even post a picture of the back so you can remember what that looks like um, when it's attaching in on the back of the button in order to use it as a pendant or an earring to hang it nicely. Um, that'll give you kind of a reminder of what to do. And then don't forget, we've got this fantastic deal going on on our website of buy three, choose one free in buttons. And we have 18 different styles that went up on the website today that you can check out at softlexcompany.com. And uh, we do free shipping over $49 in the U.S. as well. And we ship worldwide. So if you don't live in the U.S., we'll give you your international rates when you uh, place your online order. Becky says she loves that blue button. Yeah, this one. This one's online. I'm pretty sure this is one of the available uh, buttons online if you want to check that out. In fact, I should put it over here because I got to return these buttons. And Christian says, I have buttons in my shopping cart, so let me go check out. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> Did you see our email today, uh, Christian? Kristen used the check out our new buttons. <laughs> we love a good, um, we love a good wordplay. Can you show what it looks like when you're wearing it? Are we talking about the dragonfly, Susan, or are we talking about an earring? Which one are we, which one are you looking at? Fern says she didn't see that button. I wonder which one you mean. Do you mean this one? I feel like this one's online. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I have 17, I think, oh, and 18. Dragonfly's 18. So yeah, I think that one, I think that's the one that's online. It's, this one is not online. This one I bought at a live sale earlier. Um, these ones are online though. Susan, I think you're meaning the dragonfly. Yeah, let me hold it up. Let me get that. It's a little long. So let me see if I can figure out how to show it to you here. There we go. I sometimes use chain um, when I connect something and it'll just sort of slide back and forth. Uh, if you like things to be really set, then you can use soft flex from the get go with no sliding motion. I don't really mind it that it moves around. Um, let me see if I can get this out of here. <laughs> and then it'll have like a little dangle down there, which will be super cute. 
So that's how it sets. Um, I have it super long, so it would be hard to see if I let it go. It, it's way down, way down long. So it's probably better at about, say right here is a really good length. Yeah, so I hope um, I was able to answer all of your questions. Let me pull this off and pull this one back off. <laughs> I have like a million things going on here. There's my face. Any other questions before I get going today? Um, the blue one is online too. It looks a little lighter on the website. Good to know. Susan says, so pretty. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I think it turned out nice. You could use a heavier chain too since it's such a big button. There's a lot of things that you could put at the bottom um, to give it a little more gravitas if you wanted. And that um, that might help the button too so that it feels like it really wants to uh, defy gravity and hold up straight. The dragonfly does look great. Yeah, it's really pretty. I agree, Kristen. Oh, good. Kristen found the button, the blue button. She has it. All right. Looks great, you guys. It's so It was so good spending some time with you today. Thank you for being here with me. Don't miss the button sale. Uh, they will be online for at least the next week while we have the sale. And then I don't know if they'll come back down um, or not. They'll probably stay online, but I don't know for sure. Um, so you're going to buy three, choose one free. So if you're buying three, make sure you put the fourth one in your cart because you're choosing it, not us. So choose your fourth one, put it in the cart. And you'll when you go to your cart, you'll see that the one of least value is free. So if you've got four of the same buttons, one of them will show up as free and three of them you'll pay for. You're welcome, Fern. Thank you for being here today. Um, there's a million other ways to use buttons. I only showed you a couple. Go to our blog and check out what some of you have been doing in the VIB group and then some of the projects that Kristen and I have done in the past. And then don't be shy about going to YouTube and just searching for button jewelry. Go to Pinterest, search button jewelry. See what people are making uh, out there in the world with, with buttons. A lot of people use buttons and jewelry, and there's a ton of stuff um, out there to learn from. And Kristen's pointing out that if you buy, if you put eight in your cart, you'll get two free. If you put 12 in your cart, you'll get three free. So it does build. Um, the more buttons you buy, the more you get free. It isn't just buy three, get one free free. It's a, you know, you can get them, get a bunch free if you buy a bunch of buttons. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a fantastic week. If you can give me a like and a share on this video, I would really appreciate it. Sending my love to each and every one of you, and I will see you guys all soon. Bye, everybody.